Good morning, my name is David, David O'Brien Monk. And today I'm going to be demonstrating a couple of interesting little bits and pieces. I'm, as you can see, sitting in my car. Um, nowhere near any Wi-Fi um, signal currently. And you may have heard of the iFi cards. That's E-Y-E-F-I. Um, here's one I'm just going to show you now. This is called a iFi Pro, and it's a four gigabyte capacity card. And here I've got a small little Kodak M1033 little pocket camera. And this takes both um, JPEGs and video. And I'm going to just pop in the little Wi-Fi card. And that's it, now then. The card behaves like uh, a normal STHC card in that uh, you can record uh, obviously photos and video onto it and so forth. But here's the clever bit. The card also incorporates its own built-in Wi-Fi. This needs to be pre-configured. In other words, you have to pre-configure it as to uh, what networks it's going to connect to. Uh, it can also be connected up to ad hoc networks. Um, and it can also uh, use a number of free of charge hotspots. Uh, additionally, you can get it to find any network it sees and see if it's um, unsecured to go and use that as well. But all these are optional things to do with it. Now the beauty of this is, is as you take photographs, if you are in a uh, network range, um, a wireless network range, it will start to transfer those pictures automatically to your designated destinations. So for instance, a destination might be, well, a particular directory on a particular computer. Uh, it might well be to um, upload it onto uh, in the cloud site, such as the likes of Flickr for stills stroke video or YouTube for video. And you can configure this lot so it all happens automatically. You can set it up in a slightly different way in that you can then get it to send only the photographs that you've so marked to send. And you do this by protecting the photographs against deletion and it will then spot which ones are protected and send just those. Likewise, if you have a camera which is capable of shooting uh, raw images as well, it will break up where it was sent, if you so desire, uh, by a different directory, where the JPEGs go and where the RAWs go. Or, for instance, JPEGs only. So, for example, if you're doing a shoot in a studio and you want shots to appear uh, locally on a particular computer for your client to see, or even for your model to see, um, JPEGs can load up very fast and uh, you, you obviously load your RAWs separately uh, via card into a card slot reader. But if you want, you can make the device actually transmit both. Okay, so you've got the idea behind that. Um, the reason why I'm here now is I want to go through something that's a little bit different um, and uh, something that's really quite good fun. These things are great, uh, obviously, uh, in which you've got Wi-Fi access, but what happens if you're parked up where I am at the moment where there's no Wi-Fi signal at all? Well, first of all, um, I have with me my trusty iPhone. And there we go. There's a couple of things a bit different about this one compared with most. Uh, to start with, it looks a bit bulkier than usual, and that's because it is. Uh, it's because it's in a Mophie juice pack, and if I turn this around, you can see there's some lights on the bottom there. And those will give me the status of the battery pack. And this is a nice charged battery pack. And you can basically switch between the battery um, in the iPhone or the external battery. If you switch the external battery, the one that's built into the case, that will then start to charge up the battery inside the iPhone. So it virtually doubles your battery life. And if you're on the go all the time and use your device a lot and so forth, they're great things. They do make it a bit bulky, but that's not unpleasant, actually, because it's something bigger to hold on to. Secondly, there is a screen on the front of this, which is a privacy filter. And this works a little bit like the 3M privacy filters on laptops. So whilst you're um, head on, as it were, you can see everything. But once you go to the side, you can't see what's going on. So it's great if you're responding to texts or emails and so forth um, on, a, uh, on, on a train and so forth. And other people by the side of you can't see what you're up to. OK, now this is a jailbroken and unlocked iPhone. So in actual fact, it's working on the 3 network in the Republic of Ireland. 
uh, which is a network I like. Their, their data around the Republic is very good and uh, often I've found um, a three signal where I haven't found other carriers. Applications which are installed on this machine uh, include Cydia and one of the sources that you can download within Cydia is called ROC, R-O-C-K. And there's an application within ROC called MyY, M-Y-W-I, MyY. Now here's the clever bit. There's a number of applications uh, on the iPhone that enable you to tether the device um, using an ad hoc network. That's where the PC or laptop on the other end is already running an ad hoc network for you to connect the iPhone to. Well, that's fantastic. If you've got another computer lying around, then that's what you want to do. If, however, you're trying to transmit a signal from your camera into your iPhone using Wi-Fi, how do you do it? Because the camera can't support by itself a Wi-Fi network. Well, that's where my Y comes in, and that's exactly what my Y offers. Okay. At the moment, it says my Y tethering is switched off. So the first thing I've got to do is to go and switch that on. Slide the switch. Okay, it's now started and if we look at the top of the screen we can see that tethering has begun. So this is going to connect via a channel called iPhone MyY. So I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do, I'll take a picture of me as well. I want to do this all together like this. Here we go. Not focusing on anything at all. Dire photograph. Let's check another one of the, of the kit. And here we go. Right. I've just taken a couple of really tatty photographs. <laughs> um, and we'll see what happens. Well, there's certainly something transmitting upwards. If we look at the what's going on there. Now, unless you've got a camera which is so specifically designed for a Wi-Fi card, and an, an iFi card, and most of them are not, you can't tell when the upload's finished. However, there's an iFi application for iPhone, which is free of charge. Uh, you will need an iFi account, which is one that's automatically uh, set up, as it were, when you first buy an iFi card and uh, set, set the thing up. You create an account to go with it. And you can match the account details on your iPhone with the iFi application. One of the things that allows you to do is to go away and check what's been uploaded. So to that end, let's go and see what's been uploaded. Okay. If, here we go. And if you look at the top two photographs, those are the photographs which are now actually been uh, uploaded. Uh, so those will be appearing on Flickr. Uh, and they'll be appearing on my iMac at home. And just to prove I'm not doing any cheating here, I'm going to find the same photograph I've taken on the camera itself. There it is. So that's using automatic photographic upload with a Wi-Fi card in this little Kodak camera, no wires attached, using an emulator on the iPhone that emulates an ad hoc network on the phone itself. Again, I have to keep saying that because it's different from other applications which appear identical in functionality. You need a jailbroken phone, you need Cydia loaded, you need to download the MyRoc downloader. MyRoc is a company that sells a number of little applications of which this is one of a couple which are just superb. And it found the device, it's transmitted it, it's transmitted the file files, um, beautiful. What more could you want in the middle of nowhere in your car? All you need, of course, is a 3G signal. Cheers. Many thanks indeed. My name's David, David O'Brien Monk. Thanks for your time again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.